Hello there. In this video, I'm going to talk about the Cherry Streetcar. This is Toronto's most recent addition to its streetcar network, but also its most recent reduction from the streetcar network. That said, however, this streetcar line was merely the first step in a much greater scheme. So, let's get into the video. The origins of the Cherry Streetcar can be traced back to the development of the Portlands area. For most of the city's history, the area defined as the Portlands was the center of Toronto's industrial sector, being the home to many factories, warehouses, distilleries, and other such businesses. It, as its name implies, was also the location of the Port of Toronto, which connects the city's industries to the rest of the Great Lakes cities. The Portlands were also the central hub for railway traffic in southern Ontario. So the combination of a vast industrial area mixed with an almost endless expanse of railway lands made the Portlands both an almost inhospitable place, but also an almost inaccessible one. While many streetcar lines traveled around the northern periphery of the Portlands, it was only the Ashbridge streetcar that made its way deep into the area. The Ashbridge streetcar, however, only operated for seven years, operating from 1917 to 1924. This streetcar would run from Queen Street to the intersection of Commissioner Street and Cherry Street. Due to low ridership though, this service was cut and converted to bus operations. You can learn more about this in my video about the Ashbridge streetcar linked in the top corner and at the end of the video. The Portlands would remain a largely cut off area from the rest of the city as far as public transit is concerned. You would have to be content with either driving or walking to work if you worked down there. After World War II, the Portlands area began to slowly change, and like most other Great Lakes cities, the industries that once populated the area began to disappear. As the industries that once populated the Portlands began to move out into the suburbs, move overseas, or just outright disappear, the once vast polluted industrial center of the Portlands became a vast desolate wasteland of large empty contaminated lots. However, something was different with Toronto. Unlike many of the Rust Belt cities in the United States which were for all intents and purposes killed by their evaporating manufacturing sector, Toronto wasn't. In fact, Toronto continued to grow even with its disappearing industrial sector. Now, there are many reasons why this occurred, however one that I think is important is the exodus of English speakers from Quebec that was happening at the same time. I'm not going to get into the politics of Quebec separatism, but at the time it was a really big deal and nothing makes business flee an area faster than political instability. As the English speaking Canadians left Quebec, most ended up in Toronto and they brought their businesses with them, including Canada's financial sector. People bring business and business brings people. The void opened up by Toronto's disappearing industrial sector was quickly being filled up by the new and growing financial and service sectors. Now, most of these new residents would end up in the suburbs where land was still plentiful and cheap. However, land is a finite resource and eventually the once empty fields of Toronto's suburbs had quickly filled up with new subdivisions. While developments spilled outside the borders of Metro Toronto, there was still a demand for living space in the city proper. Urban planners would begin to look at the now largely empty but still heavily contaminated Portlands. The Portlands presented itself as a blank slate, a large chunk of empty land that could be molded into anything, the final frontier for the city of Toronto. This new and vast development, however, would need to be served by adequate public transit, and Toronto's streetcar network would do the trick. Urban planners argued that any development in the Portlands would require a higher order of transit, and streetcars would be perfect at enticing developers and new residents to the area. Streetcars, on top of their higher capacity, also offer a sort of assurance of permanency, since unlike buses, it's harder to change or abolish a streetcar line due to the money invested into the infrastructure. A bus route can be abolished on a dime at absolutely zero cost. A streetcar requires a bit more justification, 
It costs money to put the tracks in the ground, and it will cost money to take them out. From the 1990s into the 2000s, the once heavily industrialized waterfront began to fill up with new condominium developments, and these developments were creeping closer and closer to the portlands. The city would set up a department known as Waterfront Toronto to coordinate the redevelopment of the waterfront, including the lands and the portlands. In 2007, Waterfront Toronto would ask the TTC to examine the expansion of streetcar service into an area known as the West Donlands. The TTC would examine three options, the first being an expansion on Parliament Street from King Street to the Railway Corridor, the second was an expansion south along Sumac Street and Cherry Street from King Street to the Railway Corridor, the third option was an expansion south on Parliament Street east on Front Street and then south on Cherry Street to the Railway Corridor. The TTC would choose option 2 as this line would be closer to both the newly planned development in the area as well as the distillery district which by this point had started to become a popular shopping and tourist area. Cherry Street would also offer an easier expansion deeper into the Portlands area as development progressed. The development in the West Donlands would be confirmed with Toronto's successful bid for the 2015 Pan Am Games. The West Donlands area would be used as the Athletes Village and then converted for residential use after the conclusion of the Games. As planning progressed, Waterfront Toronto, the TTC and community groups would look at the streetcar proposal to decide on the best course of action regarding the alignment of the route. They would examine various options including building the line in its own private right of way down the middle of the road, like on Spadina Avenue, building the right of way off to the side of the road, running the line in mixed traffic, and putting the streetcar tracks in the curb lanes. It would be decided to put the streetcar line off to the side of the road on its own right of way as this could be better integrated into the overall public realm. TDC commissioners would approve of the project and construction would begin in 2013. Toronto was now laying down brand new tracks for a new streetcar line for the first time since 1990. Construction of the new streetcar line would be completed in 2016, with this new section of track running from the intersection of King Street and Schumach Street to the newly built distillery loop at the railway tracks. However, even before this, the TTC would begin to contend with the question of how exactly this new line would be served. The area served by this new streetcar hadn't seen any sort of public transit since the abolition of the Ashbridge streetcar. As well, there was no immediately obvious routes that could be diverted onto this newly built line. While the line is connected to the 504 King Streetcar, that route is already a crosstown route running from Broadview Station to Dundas West Station. The TTC would briefly consider re-establishing the Parliament Streetcar. However, it was determined that the cost to construct new tracks from Carlton Street to Castle Frank Station was not justifying of the route's potential ridership. A proposal to run the 508 Lakeshore Streetcar to the Distillery Loop was also examined, but it was deemed the route's infrequent service pattern would be useless to local residents. The TTC would look at operating the line as a branch of the 504 King Streetcar with every few cars either branching off to Distillery Loop and then doubling back to continue their journey to their original terminus, or by having the streetcars terminate at Distillery Loop and then return to their origin point. This option was ruled out as the TTC and Waterfront Toronto were already planning on establishing a new streetcar line from Broadview Station straight into the Portlands when development began. It would be noted that the King Streetcar at the time was already over capacity and that any diversion of the line wouldn't help the matter. In a March 2016 report, the TTC would note that the 504 King Streetcar was carrying around 65,000 passengers per weekday, making it the most heavily used route in the city outside of the subway. The 504 King Streetcar even carries more people per day than the Shepherd Subway and the Scarborough RT line. 
Congestion through the central part of the route between Dufferin Street and Parliament Street had reached the point where local residents could no longer get on the streetcar reliably. On top of this, the TTC was operating 17 buses during the morning and 9 in the afternoon on the route to help with the overflow of passengers. This fact presented a solution, that being to offer a supplemental service through the central part of the route. This would not only help relieve congestion on the route, but also answer the question of what was to be done with the new streetcar line on Cherry Street. The TTC would examine the creation of a new route running from Dufferin Loop to Distillery Loop with cars running every 15 minutes during the off-peak and every 8 to 9 minutes during the on-peak hours. The 504 King Streetcar would remain at its normal 10-minute interval. The TTC would also look at rolling out the new low-floor Flexity Freedom streetcars on the line which would make it the first fully accessible east-west streetcar line in downtown Toronto. This report would go to TTC commissioners on March 23, 2016 and be approved. This new route would be known as the 514 Cherry Streetcar. Service on the 514 Cherry would begin on June 18, 2016 with opening ceremonies being held at Distillery Loop. There, dignitaries from the city, province, and federal governments appear to give speeches and take the ceremonial first ride. The route was successful from the start and helped ease the congestion on the King Streetcar. Service would improve even more in 2017 when the King Street pilot project began that banned through traffic along King Street in the downtown core. Ridership levels on both routes combined would reach 80,000 passengers per weekday. In the summer of 2018, the TTC would begin track work at the intersection of Broadview Avenue and Girard Street. Because of this, the TTC would temporarily end service on the Cherry Streetcar and run all King cars from Dundas West Station to Distillery Loop. Service to Dufferin Loop would eventually be handled by an extended 503 Kingston Road Streetcar. This split in service impressed the TTC and they began to look at making it permanent. Splitting a streetcar route in two isn't without precedent either as the 501 Queen was split in two at Humber Loop to increase reliability on the western end of that line. In August of 2018, the TTC originally intended to restore service as normal. However, the TTC service department would announce the plan to end service on the 514 Cherry and split the 504 King into two routes. This plan would take effect on October 6, 2018, when service on the 514 Cherry Streetcar was abolished, ending two years of service. The next day, service would commence on a split King Streetcar, with the 504A running from Dundas West Station to Distillery Loop, while the 504B operates from Broadview Station to Dufferin Loop. The Cherry Streetcar is interesting in that it is a small portion of a much greater plan. The route only lasted two years, yet it is always possible we will see the route again in the future. As of the making of this video, development of the Portlands area has yet to commence, but planning work does still continue. Recently, plans for the expansion of Union Station Loop and the East Bayfront LRT have come out and as expected, this plan includes a connection to the streetcar line on Cherry Street. It is almost certain that we will see the 514 Cherry Streetcar again in the future, although what route it follows is still unknown. Nothing in regards to what routes will serve what parts of the Portlands is set in stone at the moment. It is possible a resurrected Cherry Streetcar would run from Dufferin Loop into the Portlands, although where it goes from there is anyone's guess. Current plans have streetcar lines on Commissioner Street and Unwin Boulevard, so the Cherry Car could serve any one of these streets. It is also possible the Cherry Streetcar could terminate at Cherry Beach, although at the time there is no plans to build streetcar tracks to the beach even though it would only require an additional 280 meters of track south of Unwin Boulevard, which wouldn't cost all that much money. 
The line along Cherry Street was born out of the necessity to aid development of the West Donlands neighborhood and create a jumping off point for a future extension further south into the Portlands. The 514 Cherry Streetcar, however, was born out of the necessity to aid in relieving the congestion on the King Streetcar. When the idea of splitting the King Streetcar came along and proved just as useful as the Cherry Streetcar, the Cherry Streetcar no longer had a purpose. While it lacks purpose today, it will gain purpose in the future as the Portlands develop. It is fair to say the story of the Cherry Streetcar isn't finished yet and this current absence is only temporary. And with that, I will end the video here. Thank you for watching this video and if you enjoyed it and want to see more like it please hit that subscribe button because there are more videos like it on the channel and there are more videos like it on the way. If there's anything you want to say about the Cherry Streetcar don't be afraid to do so in the comment section down below. And with that I'll see you in the next video.